Hughes is a writer, historian, and she in the past researched some interesting characters that have been largely forgotten. I was born in the United States and married a South African, Mobile Oil, sent my husband to Cape Town. And that's the first very important part of the story because a lot of it wouldn't have been so easy or even possible uh, had I not been here. I got a temporary post at Rustenburg and while I was there I had a good idea for a book and I gave that idea to Maskew Miller and they published it. And then I came upon a thesis that it was written by an American historian named Richard Elphick and it was about the indigenous people of the Western Cape. And he stopped in 1713 and I was in touch with him and he said no, he was not planning to continue from that point. And that was the beginning of what you can call it a lifetime project in, uh, in, in researching beyond that point and writing about the people. son Paul approached me. They've known my work some, for some time and they know that I especially concentrate on doing portraits. As we have this cousin who's a, a lovely painter. He um, contacted me and asked me to make a painting of Vertries depicting these characters that she had written about with her. So when I started my research I kept a list of all the names I came upon but then there was a problem and that was that most of them just had one name and it was very difficult to know that you were you know, dealing with the same person. But over time, I built up two life stories out of pages of names. One was David Stuermann, and the other was Cupido Cockerlock. This afternoon, I'm going to pose Vertries with three characters from this farm. So it's almost like a point of departure. I'm very curious to see what she does. This will be my first uh, close up to how Dooley works. Come on, let's take a few shows and then see how it goes. And you don't have to smile, you have to be honest. You too, Vertries. <laughs> Vertries would like to be depicted the way she looked when she was doing the research. So therein lies the challenge for me, so that I will try and capture that Vertries, even though I'm looking at a slightly different Vertries these days. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Kratoa, who's the third person, things had been written about her, but I was invited to write her story and it was published by the University of Cape Town. I called it uh, Kratoa, A Woman Between. Kratoa, also known as Eva, was a young Khoi girl taken into Van Rubeck's home when he arrived in the Cape. She quickly learned how to speak Dutch and even Portuguese and she became his translator. And that's a very tricky position to be between two cultures and, you know, to be, seek the trust of both. I may depict her in her skins because I think that's who she really was. She died in exile unhappy because she wasn't with her people. Kakerlak was actually raised in a Boer family household. He, he featured in, in the Third Frontier War. The London Mission Society he retreated to Crawford and started preaching there. And Cupido attended the, um, the services and he was baptized in the um, river in Crawford I'll probably depict him wearing Western dress, a shirt of some type, probably hatless and with the Bible in his hand. He made a career in the, in the Mission Society. And then David Stureman is the most extraordinary story. His brother was a leader in the, the same war, the Third Frontier War. They actually gave him a small piece of land, and that was an unprecedented experiment. Before he'd even taken up occupation of the land, he, there was an accident and he was killed. And then David was the next brother, and he became the captain. Stureman was most of his life fleeing and fighting, but also being a diplomat. He was arrested and put on Robben Island and escaped from Robben Island, and then was arrested again and escaped again from Robben Island twice. He ended up being transported to Sydney as a convict. But they're just examples of people who deserve their place in, in society, but 
the records don't make it possible. So all three of these characters were really complex characters. Bringing out the complexity is something very difficult and I'm not sure that I will even manage, but I will try. I have every confidence in Dudley's coming up with something that'll be interesting. I have no idea what that will be. When creating a painting, I usually take quite a long time drawing in the first place. And then I would typically work from dark to light. Mostly when I'm painting more than one character, I would start and finish one character at a time. I tend to do the background last, although sometimes the painting does take on a life of its own. I love oil paints, that's why painting oil. I love the texture, that buttery texture, and I love the way it glistens. And I like showing in my work, I like showing that it is oil paint. <laughs> Typically a painting with four characters in it shouldn't take me longer than two weeks. If everything goes well, then it'll be shorter. Happen. I'm very impressed and respect and admire everyone that I have depicted there and you too. <laughs> and that's why it needs to be yeah. that size. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank um, you, Virtues. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of trepidation about that, whether I've actually achieved what they wanted or not. But I, I do feel happy. I, I love the process of being, of engrossing myself in each character. When I wrote about them, uh, Katoa had already was known, but the other two people uh, were not. And I wanted them to find a place in, our, in the record of the past. And that did happen to a limited degree. But, you know, this visualizing them is also important. And I like the way that's been done very much. Mm -hmm.